everybody, Josh the RV Nerd with Bish's RV actually down here at Ember's facilities today getting a look at some new floor plans from their Touring Edition series. Uh, this is the new 24BH or MBH. It's available with or without a Murphy bed and actually based on your feedback from the prototype videos that we put out on this channel, they've made a couple changes and I think you're going to like what they're offering here. So this is a floor plan that again, it's, it's not a, like the floor plan is new within the business. It's just the way that they've executed it is very, very different. As opposed to the Overland series which is really designed to kind of get you off the pavement, this is designed to be something very plush, very comfortable, um, you know, going down the highways in the parks, but it does have some uh, pretty solid solar option capacity if you do want to spend a little bit of time untethered, as it were, like if you want to kind of bleed the difference or do a little bit of mooch docking, like off a friend in a driveway. Uh, this model, it's their full eight foot wide series. They're like seven foot tall inside, which is a rare, rare quality. And I can't think of a lot of RVs making a floor plan this short with a seven foot ceiling. It's carpetless and ventless flooring. It's hot, cold, camp rated. Uh, they've got tank heaters and closed belly, radiant barrier, factory TPMS, and um, we're going to talk more about this later. This RV literally throws radar out its butt to make sure that there's nobody in a little Kia Soul like myself in the uh, in your blind spots here. Um, it's a folding cargo bunk model, which is very cool because what that means is that uh, you know, this is something that you can load a lot of cargo in, like a lot of big bulky stuff, like even maybe a kayak or some e-bikes or something like that going down the road. Um, and depending on what you do with the bedroom, it might be an amazing mobile office space. I could actually see this working for a solo runaround um, mobile professional. I could see it working for a family. I could, I could see you using it for your family and then work when you're not using it for the family. It's awesome. It's flexible. I can't wait to see what you think. There are a couple little interesting, maybe you could say, I, I like to say janky things about it, but I'm going to show you a fair look at this thing. And if you like that, make sure you hit that subscribe button. Let's see what she might have to offer you. Now, like I said, it's not necessarily uh, this floor plan that's new. It's the way that they've executed it is uh, not really like anything else out there. So what is Ember doing differently? What are they doing well? And maybe even, where are they falling short? Those are the kind of questions I want to answer in this video. Like, uh, bigger AC standard, but a lot of manufacturers do that. It's still cool. Um, in these touring editions, the airs are all centralized, whereas in the Overland series, they are not. That big XL vent fan right here, no 4-inch fart fans found in the Ember family of campers. Uh, that includes the bathroom as well. There are some manufacturers that like to give us the big fan there in the living room, but then they do scale back when you get into smaller rooms, which logically I don't necessarily have uh, an issue with, but Ember just kind of likes to go all the way every time. You got that Tootsie Toaster over there giving us some bonus heating, and speaking of heating, you're not going to have to worry about kids dropping Skittles and M&Ms and whatever Lego figures down into floor vents. Uh, well, because this anaconda ain't got none, basically. <laughs> it also doesn't have carpet in the slide, so this is very family-friendly and very easy cleaning. This is something I just don't see a lot in the towable RV industry. They've swapped out from those post-style tables to a full-on twist-and-shout removable lagoon table, and you're going to get to see uh, that thing in action a little bit later when we start diving uh, a little bit deeper into the details. Now, if that you, Dinette, uh, isn't your favorite thing. It is nice that it folds into a big sleeper. Uh, you could swaption that out for something like a, uh, like a theater or, uh, something like that. Now those dual pane, uh, Euro windows that tilt open for crazy good airflow, they have a day and night shade integrated into them so that you don't have to, uh, you know, you don't have those big bulky valences sticking out at you. Those are back Supply issues are resolved on those. Those are standard, but you do still have the ability to outfit this with dual pane frameless windows, and those come with blackout roller shades, which is kind of cool. So no matter what, you're getting a really cool thing. You might notice this is a folding cargo bunk. We're going to get to see that thing in action later. We're going to close up the slide and show you this sucker in road mode. Now, these bunks are 600 pound rated, uh, basically 300 pounds per sleeping space. And uh, I do like that each bunk has its own light, its own individual curtain, its own window that does open for airflow. Pardon my stuff over there. They got me parked. Uh, I, I'm not complaining because the weather was terrible outside. The weather uh, was a little bit frightful. And being inside is a little delightful. Uh, but the, um, the fact is I'm parked right under an infrared uh, heater source. And I'm, I'm, well, as the mask would say, smoking. Now, over here. 
I love these little touches. They put the fire extinguisher here where it's not going to get like kicked off, it's protected, but you see those switches? One is for that little amber accent light right there, giving you a little bit of an ember glow. I don't think that's uh, unintentional by this uh, team's part. The other one there is a um, uh, dimmer switch for your outside awning lighting. Now, I failed to display this. This is my fault. Full viewing window, great. It does have the privacy shade and they start opening from the bottom up now. Once again, your feedback made that happen. I whined about it a lot last year. A lot of people agreed with me. And manufacturer said, let's do it. Let's make it happen. All of our touch controls here right by the door. And that has a little motion sense Obi-Wan Kenobi job so that when you walk in, the panel will light up and give you your bearings and you can turn on all your lights and whatnot. Now, remember I said the awning lights have a dimmer. Our ceiling lights inside also are on a dimmer switch. That is very cool. Frankly, I, I wish more manufacturers were doing that. It really doesn't cost a lot is what's funny. Um, it's so, so nice though. Like if you need it for a nightlight function or if you're getting up early in the morning or late at night, you don't want all the lights blaring at you. You know, you have some different options and uh, opportunities there. Now let's start diving a little bit deeper into the details. Quick little demonstration of those lagoon tables for you. If you're not familiar with those, they're not fixed in place. If you want to shift it to one side, you want to have a table there. You want to use it like a little bit of an open lounge. You want to just take the thing out. You want to, uh, you get the idea. You can do whatever you want with it. 12 volt DC compressor fridge is standard standard in these models. Um, they are not currently offering a gas electric two-way option. And if you're kind of concerned about being able to power that thing up while you are off-grid, remember that they do offer a 400 watt uh, factory optional solar package. And that does include a 2000 watt inverter that will be wired to every single household outlet in this RV. In 2000 watts, you can do a lot more than a thousand watt inverter. A lot of thousand watt inverters aren't even capable of running a coffee maker, just maybe some little fans or something like that. 2000 watt inverter can do a lot of work pretty much short of being able to turn over an air conditioner. Now, our entertainment center in these, uh, they're all 12 volt. So again, if you are doing, uh, you know, not exclusively park camping, you can keep the entertainment rolling on these, which is pretty cool. Uh, down below that, of course, we do have that electric space and uh, space heating Tootsie Toaster. And in the touring edition, unlike Overland, we are starting to get more of those uh, traditional features like a full oven. But notice they're using the bigger 22 inch, not the 16 inch uh, Easy Bake style. Very easy reach outlets on this. They did not have to resort to putting outlets under the overhead cabinets, which with a seven foot ceiling, a lot of appliance cords would really struggle to, to marry up to. But again, look at the details. You folks said countertop extension should be counter flush. Ember did it. But they didn't like how it jiggle banged in transit. They didn't want it denting the front of that refrigerator. So they added a little bungee catch hold back. And that's the extra little detail stuff I like about this. Now, um, what I appreciate about this company is that they don't claim to be perfect and they know that they're still learning, that they're still evolving and they're really just letting you folks guide them. But I love the fact that they are listening. That to me is such a huge deal. Now, of course, we got that sliding pocket privacy door up front here, 60 by 80 true queen. Uh, you don't have to worry about the Bed Goblin Union ripping your toes off down below this thing. You can see, of course, you know, again, the heat vents. Now, that right there is one of the uh, the monitors. that uh, I believe that's for the inverter right there uh, that comes with the optional, I think they call it like off-grid package. But now we have a True Queen bed. The cool thing is they didn't shortchange your ability to walk around or change your shorts. <laughs> Um, in, in the bedroom here. Now, this is a dual entry door model. You're going to see uh, that will help us in travel access mode. Some folks get a little spooked by a door in their bedroom, though. Remember, you can always just deadbolt the thing and make sure that people can't walk in and look at you while you're breathing. Now, this is a uh, 30 amp service. They do not offer second air upgrades on these uh, whatsoever. One thing I do want to key into though, if you look at these uh, wardrobe stands, they do one of my favorite things. They've got those headboard power pockets there and they're not using the blue lights that can affect some people's uh, circadian rhythm sleep patterns. They're using the little amber, ember glow, the little you know glowing fireplace kind of um, lighting right there with household and USB outlets behind both of those. Now, standard in these will be the Stargazer Skylight System. And notice how I've got that day shade partially drawn right there. If you notice, that's also got a like a, a blackout sort of 
uh, nightshade as well. And the day shade can act as a great bug screen, which works really well too. Uh, like, you know, when it's that kind of 60 degree weather and you really like that sort of cool airflow coming in, that's where these come into play. But remember, this thing has all kinds of different options. You can get it. Uh, the, the 24BH has a 60 by 80 True Queen fixed bed, kind of like you saw when you walked in. Or you can get the MBH, which has a private Murphy bedroom, which is a really crazy, weird concept. I never thought I would like until I saw it. Now, this is one of the updates that your feedback also helped shape. The original version of this had a single lagoon table that mounted dead in the middle of the sofa. And they added a second one and they're on the side of the sofa so left and right sides of the sofa have their own individual little uh you know drawers or, or, or not drawers i'm sorry tables i don't even know where i got drawers but um under the murphy sofa is where all of that hardware can store so you still maintain under bed storage space even with the murphy bed like i said i never i never thought i would like a private murphy bedroom um, until I saw what they were doing here. Now, like I said, you do have the, uh, the two section shades. And again, based on your feedback, they made the night shade open from the bottom instead of the day shade. A lot of people wanted to see that. So they said, no sweat. We can just flip our windows and install it that way. There's also the nice little details of you got the handy little U latch right there. So if you are, you know, working on expanding the family to be able to fill up those bunks, <coughs> well, you can do so uh, in privacy, which I think a lot of people will appreciate. Unless you're, you know, a little more of a show person. <laughs> I'm going to get a call from HR on that one. Doesn't matter. Porcelain foot flush stool with just awesome room around it. They have done an amazing job in this bathroom. This is very similar to the uh, the bathroom arrangements you find in a lot of the Overlands. I love that backlit morning mirror right there, but there's another one of those um, kind of amber lights in here for that, uh, you know, evening use and function. Again, the bigger, better fan here in the bathroom, really where you want it and need it most. And with a seven foot ceiling, I am a happy nerd standing in that thing. I am not worried about scalping myself in that. Uh, over here, they do have open face bathroom storage, and that is one of my personal nitpicks. I do prefer uh, enclosed bath storage. I've been told by people that, no, I throw my towels and stuff in there, and it's not a problem. Any experienced RVers, if you could chime in on that, if you have open face bathroom storage, let me know if it actually works just fine, and uh, essentially, I need to quit whining about this stuff. I'd appreciate that. But now when we close up the slide out, this is where nearly any builder of this floor plan, you could say things start to get a little dicey. Uh, the travel and road mode access. And even when something isn't perfectly 100%, you know, sunshine and rainbows, I still like to showcase it so that you get the best and fairest, you know, uh, view of what you're looking at here. But thankfully, this RV has two entry doors. So the fact that you can't pass through straight to the bedroom from here does have a workaround now some people don't really care for that concept and some people really don't mind it all just sort of depends on what you happen to find accessible what is also very cool though is remember this is a cargo bunk model we haven't really seen it in cargo bunk configuration yet and if you notice you've even got some handy dandy cargo tie downs right there so if you want to use this space for something like, I don't know, loading up e-bikes, or if you notice the fact that it's mostly unobstructed all the way up there, I have actually personally tested and loaded like a kayak up in the belly of uh, these embers, even smaller models than this, and uh, it, it, it works like a charm. Now, we're going to talk about this more in a minute, but once again, those Euro-style Lexan dual-pane windows, those are back. There was a little bit of shortage of those during the COVID era, but that has since been handled. But once again, we have dual entry doors. And if you are looking at the M version, the 24MBH rather than the 24BH, which has a fixed bed, this is another thing that's really cool. Not only do you have that rear cargo space, in a sense, you have a side load cargo space since that bed can move and get out the way uh, in ludicrous kind of fashion. <laughs> And as long as we're wrapping our way around here, I thought it might be actually kind of cool to show you a little bit of a uh, before and after. Now, you see those little uh, lightsaber orange vertical glow beams on the front here? 
Well, you might notice how those things turned off. That is because this thing literally shoots radar out its butt. Now, you see how it's winking at us over there on the left side? That's because we are in a live production facility right now, and there are folks moving around behind the scenes, doing their darndest trying to stay uh, out of the camera frame. But uh, basically what that's telling you is it's a blind spot assist, where if you're going down the road, and, uh, you know, I always recommend towing extension mirrors, but even then, there is always just a little bit of an aspect of, am I clear to change lanes? Uh, this RV can tell you that. It can tell you if there's somebody where you can't see them. Now, something I should have done is I probably should have popped open the doors over here in the face of the slide so you can check the storage there, but we're going to do that right about now. Now, you've got two different... <laughs> just spotted that out of the corner of my eye and my brain melted as I was reading it I love I love people that have a little bit of a sense of humor sorry uh sorry if my cackling laughter blew your eardrums out anyway this is behind the refrigerator the refrigerator is not as deep as the slide and they said we don't want to waste the space so they did what I call the endoscopy elephant enema cargo storage method right here where it does go all the way up to the top of the slide out now you don't have a door that goes all the way up there because you can't really reach up there to make sure it's properly latched and they don't want you having to jack slam the door constantly and tweaking the door to make sure that happens. I do like the slam latches. That's another nice thing I've noticed here. A lot of smaller RVs like this often have those little twisty butterfly latches and you might notice they're doing those cool slam latches. Oh, what the what? No way, I didn't even notice this before. So motion lighting, that's cool. Household outlets over here under the dinette in case there's, I don't know, something like the bubble machine you want to fire up for your kid over here on that. What would you use that power outlet for? I'm very, very curious. If I'm going to be absolutely nitpicky, a couple of these swinging doors don't have a magnet holdback. I don't think they're things that are necessarily intended to be left open for a long time. But, you know, like I said, if I'm being ultra nitpicky about this, I'm a little out of my normal order of operations, but let's take a look here, where you see the enclosed forced air heated underbelly. Now, they have a radiant barrier layer, they have holding tank heaters, Ember tests every single model individually uh, for zero to 100 degree functionality. So this is what some people might refer to as four seasons. I hate that phrase, but some people, that's what they look for. Notice how that chassis beam dropped down. This actually has a miniature front um, drop frame that is giving us that extra large front cargo storage compartment that we saw earlier. And those uh, LCI jacks right there, those quick drops. Oops, I just ran into a big old aluminum skeleton behind me not paying attention to where I'm going. I should really remember that I'm in a factory and not around the lot right now. Um, what I was getting at is those stabilizers uh, basically have a... Um, a jack support leg built right into them, like a strong arm stabilizer jack, essentially integrated into the jack. So superior stability uh, when you get to your campsite, less herky jerky wiggle jiggle. Now, speaking of that, what kind of herky jerky wiggle jiggle are you gonna get when you're towing down the road? Taking a look at the weights and the measures there. Um, I think a properly equipped half ton could be, half, I put, I put a T on the end of that, I don't know why. Uh, half ton could be a solution for an RV like this. Not every half ton is necessarily going to be proper for that though. And a lot of that is due to the hitch weight up here, that drop frame and the technically optional gearbox. This thing up front here is not technically standard, but they have not built a single touring to date without it. It's probably going to become standard. It's more than just propane storage. If you notice, it literally has a toolbox up top, or that could be a neat little place to put like wheel chocks or something like that. You have enclosed propane, you have enclosed uh, battery spaces here. Now they do have an option from the factory for a, uh, a big 270 amp hour um, lithium battery to be installed in that extra large front pass-through area. So uh, that's also something that we can assist you with uh, as a dealer. If you notice the coupler up here, they stuck with the same coupler system that the Overland uses where it's an adjustable hitch. Now, I don't think most of these tourings are gonna want a uh, articulating lock and roll off-road hitch or anything like that, but 
it's ride height adjustable. So if you have a taller vehicle, a shorter vehicle, you can make this thing marry up a little bit better with you, which I think is very, very cool. Now let's give you a brief structural overview here. Um, the roof is basically one of the only parts of this RV that is not laminated. I'm gonna get you up to the roof and talk about that more in a few minutes. But uh, your, your walls are, Almost all of the RV is basically aluminum and composites. Like you have block foam insulated walls, you have Asdell on the inside and outside layer of the walls. The floor is woodless. The um, uh, the, the floor actually has this big heavy duty, extra thick, dense composite core on it, which is twice as thick as what Airstream's using, which is pretty crazy. That is the inverter that comes with the optional off-grid package. We'll talk a little bit more about that on the roof there. You see the solar controller there uh, on the left as well. Now, something I failed to do, dag nabbit, is these front steps are not the, uh, you know, fold down stable steps, but they do have those little drop down feet to keep this thing, uh, you know, from, wiggling around under you now they did a they're very good about this they maximize their awning spaces and uh the, the trick with that is that forward awning arm overlaps where a lot of people would want a window in the bedroom and you look at it and you say yeah but there's a big blank wall right here remember your hanging wardrobe cabinets are also right behind that wall so you can't just like punch a window into it um, the, uh, wh what do you think about the little eye shadowing around the windows, by the way? Personally, I like it. I could see some people not loving it necessarily. You know, ba -da -ba -ba -ba, McDonald's style. We've got Goodyear Endurance Radials rated for 87 miles an hour with, uh, TPMS over here, which is that little box that you see right down below. Now, based on your feedback, when I, uh, released the prototype footage of these, there were a lot of questions. There were a lot of requests. And there were a lot of, I don't know how else to say it other than requestions, um, <laughs> where people were asking and suggesting simultaneously, which I think is cool. But what I'm getting at is based on your feedback, this camp kitchen is now optional. This is not standard. It is cool that it comes with the big griddle, so you can actually cook for the whole family out here. The inverter with the off-grid package will run that refrigerator and every outlet that you see, but you're not forced into that thing right there. Um, you may find some of these, uh, I suspect most of these you find in stock at dealerships will have the camp kitchen, but you can get them without, and maybe some dealers are going to order them without. I don't know. Now, remember when I said this thing throws radar out its backside? This is the radar. That's not a turn signal. That's actually a sensor. I believe that's GM tech that has been applied to an RV over here. The ladder has since become standard instead of optional. And I'm going to use that to get us up to the roof in just a minute here. Um, the uh, We already kind of looked inside the cargo door right there. Now, we've already talked about um, the, uh, the, the tires. What about the suspension? This runs on a torsion axle and suspension system. If you're not familiar with that, it's the same thing that Rockwood, uh, a lot of Airstreams, or Winnebago Micro Mini uses, and it is an absolutely fantastic system for highway use. These, again, not really intended to be off the pavement a lot. This is intended to be fantastic going down the road. Now, uh, again, telling you the good with the bad, you might have remembered in front of the tires was a kitchen gray tank outlet. This does have two stage sewer outlet. So you're going to have, uh, you know, your bathroom outlet here for your black and gray tank in the back. And then you have a second gray tank for the kitchen uh, mounted in front of those tires. Now up here on the roof, I mentioned the roof is the only area of the RV that is not laminated. They did need to go back to a traditional wood truss roof structure up here. Obviously, it's fully walkable, but they had to do that so they could centralize the air conditioner. Um, that composite laminated roof in the Overland series is very cool, but you can't really run air ducting through it effectively without giving up a lot of roof structure, and they didn't want to do that. They wanted to go with something they knew would work and was proven. Um, now, standard on this is no solar, no inverter. What we're looking at today is the optional off-grid package, and this gives us a pair of 200-watt solar panels. Um, oh, ow, ow, ooh, hot, ow, son of a... Ah, I just, as I was recording, I backed into that thing. That's an infrared heat beam, and when I bumped into it, I felt it move, so I tried to reach back me to, uh, behind me to grab it. It's hot. <laughs> I feel like the men in black burning off my fingerprints over here. 
Anyway, what I was getting at is no solar standard optional 400 watt with 2000 watt inverter off grid package as they call it. One of the other things I like about that ladder is how it sticks up over the roof line a little bit right there. And it just, it gives you something more sturdy to hang on to. And as someone who climbs up and down RV ladders for a living, I appreciate that. So thank you again for joining us. Again, if you appreciate how we show you the ups and the downs, the good with the bad, giving you information on all the different options and giving you a chance to help shape this product, make sure you hit that like button, subscribe to our videos if you haven't before. And I will leave you a link for the uh, pricing and availability in the video description, but this is a very new model. Once again, I've I've been getting a lot of advanced footage as this channel has grown. A lot of manufacturers said, boy, we'd sure like you to come down and showcase our things for people. But that means that I've been getting a lot of footage before the RVs are even in stock at our dealership. So if you click that link and it says nothing's there, the link is working. We just don't have any in stock or we might be sold out. If that is the case, contact our team. We can always get you a build sheet. We can get you some estimates, all that good stuff. When you're ready, we're ready. So take care, stay safe, have fun. And happy camping, everyone.